Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Bloodborne. Last time we started a bunch of side quests up and we beat the second boss, Father Gascoin, which was an awesome fight by the way. And before we get into gear here, we have a couple of things to do around the Hunter's Dream. First off, around back here, you might have never noticed this before because it's kind of an obscure location. Uh, there's a messenger back here offering you a messenger hat. A little skin for the messenger. Uh, and you can apply it at the fountain over here. Yeah, you can give them accessories and they will obediently adorn them. Basically, you can play dress up with your messengers here. Uh, so your spooky scary skeletons can tip their fedoras in other worlds and be like, Hey, my lady. Are their cool ass little Indiana Jones hats. <laughs> Such a cool little dopey thing to do. Oh, I love it. You'll get a lot of skins and hats and shit for them. I think one is a bucket or an urn or something like that. Uh, so we'll come back here. I think I'm going to lean a little bit on the Sauce Spear for some upcoming bosses, so we'll try to get that upgraded. Also picked up the Kirk Hammer before. Can't do any Blood Gem fortifying. Um, we'll explain what all this is probably later in the episode. Since I don't have any gems, I can't really do much there, so instead we'll turn around and talk to German real quick. Oh, not what I meant to do. The moon is close. It will be a long hunt tonight. If the beasts loom large and threaten to crush your spirits, seek a holy chalice, as every hunter before you has. A holy chalice will reveal the tomb of the gods, where hunters partake in communion. Most of the holy chalices lie deep within the tomb of the gods and the few that found their way to the surface were lost again in the hands of men but if the old hunter tales remain true one of the holy chalices is worshipped in the valley hamlet Yet the town is in disarray. It was burned and abandoned for fear of the scourge. Home now only to beasts. The perfect place for a hunter, wouldn't you say? One of the German just hinted at the chalice dungeons, which is a feature we'll play around with later. And they also have some pretty big lore significance too. Uh, let's talk to the doll as well. Ah, welcome home, good hunter. I must have drifted off. What is it you desire? Over time, countless hunters have visited this dream. The graves here stand in their memory. It all seems so long ago now. Over time. It okay, she doesn't have too much to say to us at the moment. She kind of seems startled, like she was in the middle of the of a nightmare when she woke us, when we woke her up. Um, yeah, there's so much lore stuff that I want to talk about right now, like the chalices that German mentioned, and the Valley Hamlet that actually we're gonna be on our way to pretty soon. Uh, they mentioned that burned to the ground. It's hard talking about lore in the early game. Because we know so little at this point, and the scope of the story and the lore in this is so enormous. Uh, but I had just enough for all the things I wanted to buy there. Some weapons, the pistols, uh, and we can come up here, now that we have 10 insight, to buy stuff from the, the uh, bath messengers up here. Including a bell to invade people, and a bell to help people out in co-op. And I should just have enough. Yep, yep, yep for all of Gascoin's armor. Uh, his attire. His attire. Hunter attire worn by Father Gascoin. Similar to Hunter garb created at the workshop, only these are tainted by a pungent, beastly stench that casts away, that eats away at Gascoin. Father is a title used for clerics in a foreign land, and there is no such rank in the healing church. That's what I was hinting at, um, earlier. Let's see if his, uh, garb actually has anything different. Worn by... Ah, uh, Dingy Scarf is a holy shawl and a symbol of the healing church from which Gascoin would eventually part ways. Father is a title. Okay. Yeah. 
it's kind of interesting that he had a falling out with the healing church. Does this say anything different? So, he was once a member of it. It's possible that he came from a foreign land, joined, and then left. It's not entirely clear. That part also isn't so important. Um, we're also going to mess around real quick and show off the movesets of some of these new weapons. Actually, uh, not really new. They're the starting weapons that we didn't grab before. Uh, the Hunter Axe in particular. I love the moveset on this thing, especially that three-hit combo and this. God damn, spin to win. That charge-up attack is so good. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Saw Spear, which is what I'm going to be rocking as my secondary from here on to, I'm going to say around the fourth boss. Then we'll uh, mess with the Kirkhammer a little bit more, but we can get on our way now. So where we're going to be going is we're heading back to Yusefka's clinic. Because before we progress, we actually have to move along a couple of side quests, starting back at her clinic. And on the way, we'll also check in on Gilbert, too, because uh, him and Yasefka both have new stuff going on. And a couple of other NPCs that we passed by a few episodes ago. Oh, well... Hello. Splendid. Let me ask you a small kindness. You're soon off to hunt, I presume? Then, if you find any survivors, tell them to seek Yusefka's clinic. Upon my Hippocratic oath, if they are yet human, I will look after them. Perhaps even cure them. This sickness, these beasts, they are not to be feared. This time the night is long. I may be trapped here, but I should do something to help. I'll even offer a reward for your cooperation. Tempted? Well, off you go then. If you find anyone... You can't please. If you find you please. So apparently Hippocrates existed in this universe once upon a time. That's really weird. This is uh, gonna be another safe haven. Ostensibly a safe haven. Um, I don't think Yusefka is super trustworthy. Something's really off about her, especially the, like the way she tries to goad you into to sending people to her. That specific way. I'll even offer a reward, tempted. It's, mm, it's something snake-like about her. Um, it's even more off when you realize that if you look through the cracked glass just right, you can see that Yusefka is trying to conceal a weapon. Either way, we have Erdogan Chapel now, and we have Yusefka's clinic we can send people to. Concern yourself with me. I'm afraid I'm of little help now. But before I take this, I make no use of it, but perhaps you. <coughs> what afflicted me was incurable, but this time gave me hope. Their strange blood bought me time. I was most fortunate, unharmed by the plague of beasts. I can even die human. Ah, uh, don't you worry about me. Ho <laughs> ho oh, ho ho! Yeah! I love you, Gilbert. Gilbert gave us a flamethrower. Mmm! My best buddy in the whole game. After that gesture of, oh, fiery kindness. Interesting note, Gilbert claims that he took a transfusion of Yarnum blood, and that helped him out with whatever incurable disease he has. Oh my god, I'm getting fucked up. Um, but he also mentioned that he's unafflicted by the plague of beasts, and that he can even have the mercy of dying human one day. Even though we know he's very, very sick. 
he is claiming that he's not afflicted by whatever is afflicting the rest of the town. Uh, we'll see how that shakes out. We have a lot left to uncover of Gilbert's storyline. Uh, unfortunately, I think that's the last thing he's going to really give us aside from helpful advice. Yeah, so we can send her to Yosefka's clinic or Erdin Chapel. Well, what do you know? An outsider worth a lick of salt. Well, don't just stand there. Don't you have work to do? Go slit some throats. Get this mess done with. Ungrateful ass old woman. Oh, the chop chop. That's what really incenses me. I just rescued your ungrateful ass. Mm, oh well. Uh, we have one more little quick trip to make. So we offed her safe haven back at Erdin Chapel. We didn't tell her about Yosefka's clinic. I'm not totally, totally trusting Yosefka. Not that I trust the fella back at, uh, at Erdin Chapel. They both seem pretty suspicious to me. But I got a good feeling about Erdin Chapel. And as much as I don't like that old ass woman. I wouldn't want to see anything sinister befall her. We'll see how that shakes out as well. Uh, one, like I said, one more quick trip to make and bypass you. I think this is probably the quickest way down is to go through the sewers this way. Um, we're going to head back to that little girl, the little girl who gave us the uh, music box because we haven't visited her since killing her dad at the end of the last episode and retrieving her mom's red brooch. So let's go tell a child she's an orphan. Whoa, orphan hype. It's fine. I'm sure Yarnum has many fine orphanages. This era is well known for its sterling childcare facilities, or so I'm told. Just the the most scintillating, cleanest, especially hygienic. Um, just great places to to raise a child with no parents all right so we have the crows on that side that one's coming after me I'm not sure if I killed these last time either and uh no I must have because I there's no treasure here anymore dog barking crows these are just like some of the most unsettling scary enemies in the game to be honest or I mean in this half of the game uh shit's gonna go real nuts around the halfway mark and you've seen what we've been dealing with already. You might want to prepare yourselves for what's coming. It's, uh... To continue the theme of the game of nightmares and dreams, it's pretty nightmarish. Hello, Mr. Hunter. Still can't find my mom. God, uh... This leg of her little quest line was never gonna have any kind of happy ending. Um, that's about the best way I can think to, to progress that. Uh, you have a couple of other options with what you can do there. You can do what I did and be honest and give her back the brooch because that's now the only memento she has of her dead mother. Um, who was in all likelihood murdered by her beastly father. I, wow, that's a lot of geometry. I just popped him. You can do her that small little act of mercy and honesty. I don't know if it's merciful. Um, if you don't pick it up, or if you use it for yourself, or if you leave it back in the hunter's dream, uh, and you return to the girl after you kill Father Gascoigne, you can tell her to go to Erdin Chapel, and she will try to head to Erdin Chapel on her own. I'm not going to say how that winds up for her yet. Or, number three, you can do the same thing that I just said, except instead of telling her to go to Erdin Chapel, 
you can tell her to ver to uh, visit Yasefka's clinic, which personally I find to be an appalling choice. But hey, if you're a monster, do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Anyway, anything you choose to do there, any of those options, uh, you will progress the quest in a certain way. Uh, and now we're heading back to Erden Chapel. Now that we've done pretty much everything I wanted to do as far as side quests go, taking a lot of time doing it too. Um, there is one more option where I think if you just refuse to give her the brooch uh, in that dialogue tree there, back there, uh, she'll say something like, maybe I, maybe I should go search for mommy on my own, uh, and she will wander off. And, uh, life is not gonna get much better for that kid in the near future. Uh, now I'm pretty sad. Boy, I'm gonna get a lot sadder later. <laughs> oh, the hunter. Thank you. So that old girl, you told her about this place, right? Well, she don't offer me much in the way of conversation, but still, I'd rather see her alive anyhow. Yeah, I think... Um, oh, I'll stow that thought for a second. We're going to talk to the old woman now that we can see her. Oh, I haven't forgotten. But do you think I owe you something? Well, that's a fine lark, I'd say. This old mess that Yarnum's in, it's all your fault. Dependency outsiders. Our blood's ruined. Tainted by your ilk. Don't you come near me. That's, uh, either the incoherent ranting of a, uh, an old woman in denial, or that might actually be some keen insight about what's going on here. Also, creepy vaudevillian face uh, enemies now swinging canes at us. Or umbrellas? Yeah, they might be umbrellas. Or walking sticks. Yeah, that's more likely. Um, it's possible that the Plague of Beasts started with tainted, with, uh, the pure Yarnum blood being tainted by outsiders. Or she might just be transferring blame onto us being an outsider. I don't know yet. Oh. Uh, either way, we are now heading towards the Cathedral Ward. We find some Madman's knowledge around here. Uh, there's some significance to that we'll see shortly. From here, your path is going to branch pretty substantially. Uh, you can head towards the Cathedral Ward from here, where the path is going to splinter further. Uh, you can also head to the Valley Hamlet that German mentioned, which is where we're going to be heading momentarily. I just wanted to come to the top of... Whoa, forgot about you. There's a second one. Eesh. Uh, depending on your weapon, you can actually stunlock these guys fairly easily. The Saw Cleaver... Uh, is really, really good for stunlocking them. Up here, we find the wooden shield! But Dave, I thought this game didn't have shields, you say? Well, look at the stats on it. It's a piece of shit. You can still use it. Absolutely functions the exact same way as it does in any of the Souls games, it, but it's a joke of an item. In fact, a crude wooden shield used by the masses who have arisen to join the hunt. Hunters do not normally employ shields ineffectual against the strength of the beasts as they tend to be. Shields are nice, but not if they engender passivity. Shields are nice, but not if they engender passivity. Let's take a look at the flame sprayer too. A special weapon used by, uh, okay. Spit searing flames by using blood imbued quicksilver bullets as a special medium. Not the most efficient weapon by any stretch, but sometimes a sea of flame is just what the doctor ordered. Besides, the beasts of Yarnum can always use a good cleansing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's spray this around real quick. I don't care if it's gonna waste a few bullets. That's our flamethrower that we got from Gilbert. We'll go back to the torch though. Uh, because the torch, quite handy. There is a 2000 Blood Echo uh, Lantern that you can buy from the Bath Messengers back in the Hunter's Dream, which clips to your belt so it doesn't have to be equipped to um, one of your your weapon slots. Uh, it provides a lot less light, though, and I don't really care that much about switching between a gun and a lantern at the moment. Um, so, wow, that was a lot of thoughts. All kind of mashing together. 
The shield, uh, right. The shield doesn't block all physical damage. It has really poor stability, which means what you do block... Oh, wow, he was out of range. Which means what you do block uh, is going to take a ton of stamina. Uh, it's not really... It's a joke item. It's, I think, the only shield in the game as well. Uh, it's meant simply to kind of... Make a joke about the passive playstyle of the Souls games and how that's not really viable here. Because, uh, Bloodborne's all about fleet-footed aggression and decisive attacks. What is that? I don't think I've ever seen them drop this before. Blue Elixir. A uh, dubious liquid medicine used in strange experiments conducted by high, master high ministers of the healing church. A type of anesthetic that numbs the brain. Hunters able to retain consciousness by force of will will make use of a secondary effect of the medicine which dilutes their presence while standing still. Sounds like some kind of stealth potion. That's pretty cool. Uh, over here, something neat will happen. Let me see if I can... Yeah! It's invisible, but you can clearly see that that is a goddamn invisible spider. A big one. Uh, whose hand comes out of this cosmic portal to grab you and inflict frenzy on you. Uh, and to give you plus one insight. We went from two to three insight there. So yeah, this giant invisible spider clinging to the wall of the church grabs you, hoists you up in uh, what is a pretty insidious trap that a lot of people probably die to. Uh, and it afflicts you with frenzy and gives you that one point of insight and then drops you back down. Remember, insight is the depth of inhuman knowledge. It's, it's eldritch wisdom. And if you get enough insight, like maybe 40, you will see some shit. Like the movie They Live. You're gonna see some... <laughs> um, uh, you're gonna see some unnerving, horrifying sights. In fact, the game seems to get much harder the more insight you possess, starting at around 15. Enemies will actually... Uh, change their appearance visually to more nightmarish forms. Ah, oh, the dog got clipped by fire? Yeah! Love that. Love when dogs burn in this game. <laughs> um, enemies will also gain new attacks at higher amounts of insight. That is what I was alluding to last time when I said insight impacts the game in ways that we didn't really know when the game launched. Uh, it actually is a little bit like a little mini world tendency. And it's got some effects that we as a community are still exploring, so I welcome you to pick this game up and join that exploration, because this is the most fun period of time in any release of any Souls games, is when you're still uncovering all of the secrets and depth of the game. When you're playing archaeologist to what is buried deep within. Ooh, hey, like fucking dogs. So many of them. So and bullets. Uh, what I want to be doing is I want to get him out of line of sight and drag these dogs around the corner so I can fight them without being shot. Or, you know, mmm. Yeah. Uh, just because you're now deeper in the game, two bosses in, don't start underestimating the dogs. They will still rip your shit just apart to shreds. Yeah. That, feel, that will never stop feeling so good. Yeah, don't let him fire again. Good, 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 good. Uh, right, the frenzy effect that I didn't mention, uh, that I didn't really explain. It's the thing that the uh, big spider inflicted on you. It's kind of like the new bleed status effect. When it builds up, you take a huge amount of damage. Uh, and fun note, Insight reduces your resistance to frenzy, meaning the more inhuman eldritch wisdom you possess, the more susceptible your mind is to being frenzied. Couple this with nightmares and dreams bleeding into reality, and we have some very interesting stuff cooking up for later. Now, let's meet Alfred, a new NPC. You're a beast hunter, aren't you? I knew it. That's precisely how I started out. Oh, beg pardon. You may call me Alfred, protégé of Master Ligarius, hunter of vile bloods. So, what say you? Our prey might differ, but we are hunters, the both of us. 
Why not cooperate and discuss the things we've learned? Oh, very good. Very good indeed. Take this to celebrate our acquaintance. Beast hunting is a sacred practice. May the good blood guide your way. There must be oodles for us to share. Go on, just tell me what piques your interest. As you know, the Healing Church is the fountainhead of blood healing. Well, I'm a simple hunter quite unfamiliar with the ins and outs of the institution, but I have heard that the holy medium of blood healing is venerated in the main cathedral, and that counselors of the old church reside in the high stratum of the cathedral ward. If you seek blood healing, and the church is willing, you should pay them a visit. Bergenworth is an old place of learning, and the tomb of the gods, carved out below Yarnum, should be familiar to every hunter. Well, once a group of young Bergenworth scholars discovered a holy medium deep within the tomb. This led to the founding of the Healing Church and the establishment of blood healing. In this sense, everything sacred in Yarnum can be traced back to Bergenworth. But today, the college lies deep within a tangled wood, abandoned and decrepit. And furthermore, the Healing Church has declared Bergenworth forbidden ground. It's unclear how many of its scholars remain alive, but only they know the password that allows passage through the gate. I bid you farewell. It has been a pleasure. May the good blood guide your way. May the good blood guide your way. The healing church literally worships blood. And the, um, the, the hunt seems to be an act of ceremony in addition to this. Of religious ceremony. Uh, so we're starting to unravel a little bit about what this church is all about. Um, he actually mentioned a ton there. Uh, and he gave us fire paper, which is like the turpentine of demon souls. They coach your weapon in fire. It's a consumable. Pulling this lever back will slide the enormous tomb out of the way and reveal a hidden path, which is our way to progress forward. Uh, also, don't get caught in the back by this guy. He will come after you, and I think he might either frenzy or poison you. And he's guarding his buddy, uh, a body dead at his feet, possessing madman's knowledge. Uh, some more about what Alfred told us. Um, he mentioned the Tomb of the Gods, which uh, German also mentioned earlier in the episode. Uh, he mentioned that tomb in relation to the sacred chalices. Uh, we've also heard Bergenworth, which Alfred mentioned. We've also heard that name before. Remember the Bergenworth spider from the note in Erdin Chapel? Uh, so Alfred himself is a healing church hunter. Specifically, he is an executioner. Oh, there's a goddamn werewolf down here. I almost forgot about you. I'm not that worried about werewolves anymore. I realized how easy it is to sunlock them. Just gotta watch my stamina. They have really, really dire reach. You'd say they're dire wolves. They're like wolves, but dire. Um, specifically, Alfred is an executioner, which is a covenant we'll find more out about later in the game. Uh, I believe he mentioned the name, but they're headed up by Master Ligarius. And... The Executioner's goal seems to be to kill vile bloods and to die a martyr for the Healing Church. It seems like a sacred honor for them becoming a martyr. Uh, and the goal of the Executioners, like I said, is to kill vile bloods. And the vile bloods, the Canehurst vile bloods, or Canehurst, can't remember which. Again, another covenant we will learn about in due time. Uh, the vile bloods, for the time being, are a group in opposition to the Healing Church. We're going to learn a whole lot about them and uh, the Executioners later. For now, though, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.